Hi everyone and welcome to the second part of the creation of uh, Omnibus 7.4 Dynamic Event Dashboard. If you haven't seen the first part yet, I recommend that you have a look at that one before you join me in this video. In the last video I created the design for the dashboard and we should now be ready to connect it to the Arbic server's HTTP interface to fetch some real data. The way I will do this is that uh, I will create a JavaScript that will update the dashboard items section in the HTML file using an AJAX call. The reason I want to use AJAX is that it provides a method for exchanging data between a browser and the server without a full page reload. To speed development up, I will use a JavaScript framework called jQuery. This framework will save us a lot of code and uh, it will make parsing of the data a lot easier. I'm just going to show you very quickly how to download and set this up. So to download the framework, I go to jQuery website, jQuery.com. I click on the download link and very important now, uh, right click and save link as. I save the file and rename it to jQuery.js. I'll connect to my Obix server and I will uh, upload the jQuery library to our dashboard directory and uh, I'm going to create a JS directory here to hold all our JavaScript code and copy the jQuery file. To include this library we need to do some changes in the index.html file. In the head section I add a link to the jQuery library with script type, text, JavaScript, and the source is uh, path to the jQuery file and end script. To see that everything is working we go to the dashboard page and uh, here is a very nice feature of the Google Chrome web browser. If I press shift Control c I get a debug window that I can use to monitor everything that's going on on the web page. If you're using Firefox, uh, there is a plugin that's called the Firebug that uh, gives you something similar to this. If I look in the network tab, I see all requests done by the web page. Uh, I can press refresh and I can see that the jQuery.js file is downloaded. The warning we see here is just because the object server is sending the JavaScript back as plain text instead of JavaScript as we requested, but uh, don't worry about that, uh, everything will still work. The elements window show me all the elements of the web page. If I traverse down into this, I see the container we created for the dashboard items. Let's just test the jQuery library and see if we can interact with this container. I go to the console tab, and in this tab I can now write JavaScript commands directly to the web page loaded in the web browser. If I want to use jQuery, I start my JavaScript command with a dollar sign. Then I write the item I want to target, in this case dashboard item container. And then dot, and the command I want to run on the item. And I want to try the empty command. And as you can see, we clear the container. If I refresh the web page now, everything will go back to normal, so I need to create a script on the server to do this every time the page loads. Let's just try if we can add something to container 2, since that's really what we want to do with the script. So I clear the container again, and I write dollar sign, dashboard items, and append. Everything I write here now will be appended to the dashboard items container. If you remember from the last video, we added list item for every box, so let's do that. List item, heading 3, city and heading, heading to, event count, span, space, and the text events, and span, and heading, and end list item, and enter. Very cool. Uh, let's try another one. New York, and another number, enter. Again, syslog probe, and events per second. As you can see, I can put anything I want here, and the styles we created in the last video will display the box. Let's go ahead with the real data. On the server side, let's create the JavaScript in the JS folder. 
I'll name it dashboard.js. I'll add some code to tell the script that every time the web page is finished loading, this script should be run. So in this section I'll write the empty command we used earlier, just to test it. To enable this script I need to go into the index.html file again and add it just under the jQuery include. In the web browser, if I press refresh now, we should be able to see that as the web page loads, the dashboard container is cleared. And like we saw in the console, if I want to add to the item container, I can in my dashboard.js add the append command dollar sign dashboard items dot append and then the list item. Let's try that. Now to the Ajax call. In the JavaScript I will create a new function uh, to do the call and to update the web page. This is so I can later call this function on a regular interval. I will call the function get and print status and add it to the document ready function. The Ajax call is pretty simple in jQuery dollar sign dot Ajax. Then I need to specify data type of the resource, URL to the resource, data I want to send to the resource when calling, and a success function that will be called when the data is returned. The data type is JSON, the URL is HTTP. Omni 74 port 8080 object server slash rest api slash alerts slash status and as we saw in the last video we get a lot of data back and we really don't need everything returned to us so i can choose to only include certain columns like node tally and severity and filter out any event with a node name like link for the order i want the data ordered by the node field and for a success function, I can specify my own variable to hold the data. Uh, I'm going to call this variable omnibus data. I define it and give it to the function. To check now that I got some data back when I would do the call, uh, I'm just going to log the response out to the console with the console.log command. I put omnibus data in there and check that in the web browser. So we got an object back from the server. Let's have a look. Uh, we have the row set object in the column description. I see that we only have an array with three entries and that is just the columns we requested in the call. The row array have one object for each event in the event list and the object only contains the columns we requested. So that's good. The objects are also sorted by node as requested. So if I want to print this to the screen, I only need to loop through all these entries, append the list item to the dashboard items container, and we should be set. Let's try that. To loop, I'm using the jQuery function each. So dollar sign dot each, and the data I want to loop through, omnibus data, row set, row, for every entry in this array, I want to call a function. The function will get the index of the row in the array and the data of the row. Let's just call the data event row. In this function, I will append this before the dashboard items container and then my list item HTML code. List item heading three and the city should now be in event row dot node and heading heading to and number of events will be in the event row dot tally span space events and span and heading and list item let's try that yes we got all the event rows but they are not grouped as you can see the city field is ordered and that's useful because if i in my loop check if the city in the new record I'm about to handle is the same as the previous city. Then I know that I only need to update the tally and no box should be added. If they are not the same it means that this city is ready and we can print it out since we won't see this city again in the loop. 
So I need to define two new vars for this. Uh, one that will hold a previous city, and I will set that to nothing, and one that will hold a total tally. Um, I set that to zero to start with. In our loop, I first check if previous city is the same as uh, the current event row dot node from the object server. If it's the same, we just can add tally from the object server to the total tally. If the previous city is not the same as the row in the object server, then we should print the city and total tally before we start to work on the next city. But wait, in the first loop, the previous city is set to nothing, and that will not match any record in the object server, so we need to take care of that first. If previous city is nothing, then we're just going to update previous city and total tally to whatever the current object server row has. If it's not empty, yes, then you should add a list item to the dashboard items container. Dollar sign, dashboard items, dot append, list item, heading 3, and previous city. And heading 3, heading 2, and total tally, span, space, events, and span, and heading, and list item. Let's check. Yep, that's it. The only thing we need to do now is to add the refresh interval. To do this, I go to the document ready function where we call the get and print status and add an interval for our function. Set interval, get and print status, and the interval is in milliseconds, so I will just put 5000 for 5 seconds to get a more frequent update when we test. The set interval will start after 5 seconds, so we will still need to run the get and print status function, um, or else we just have to wait for 5 seconds before the first boxes load. Let's try this. Refresh. Perfect. Uh, we can see that it updates every 5 seconds with uh, new data, and to make this very visible, let's delete everything from the event list and uh, let it repopulate. Select everything delete and update and we should be done the JavaScript code should be simple to change to whatever field you want to group and aggregate on in the next video I will move the dashboard off the object server and put it on an external server and I guess that's probably the way you will use it uh, I will also do a minor update to the code to add severity colors to the boxes as usual, the code you've seen me write on screen is available for download in the description, and uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, please write them in the comment section. Until next time, good luck with the code, and goodbye.